It's the Joe Show. It's the Joe Show. Hey, I'm going to jump right into it today. This is the show where I usually read an article a day to keep my stupid away, but instead today I'm just going to kind of free flow and talk about a situation that kind of came up recently. So a favorite comedian of mine, Chris D'Elia, got uh, called out for kind of um, going after young girls and being a little bit of a predator. I wanted to talk about a couple topics relating to Chris D'Elia getting called out, especially because I'm really hurt by it because I was a fan. I was a fan and I trusted some of the things that he said and uh, the way that he composed himself seemed seemed like he was at least attempting to be a good person. And then this kind of comes out and it, it makes me reflect on all the things that comedians say. And like now, I, how do I believe the things that are being said aren't actually coming from a place of real deep and disgusting truth? So that kind of sucks for me as a comedy fan. There's a couple things that I want to discuss in relation to this story uh, because there's a lot of things being thrown around around it. There's a lot of people defending Chris because he was a very revered comedian by a lot of people. A lot of people liked him. And so he's got some defenders and I want to look at this from both a fan perspective and from an outside kind of whole top-down view, societal and culture perspective. Uh, the things that I want to talk about are age of consent, power dynamics, systemic predatory behavior, and kind of a, his situation as a whole. Because I think that there's a couple different things kind of jumbled together here. So the first thing I want to talk about is age of consent. I actually watched a great little song earlier today that this comedian made uh, about the age of consent. And he he played the piano. I was like, these are all the states where the age of consent is 17, Alabama, Arizona, California, Alabama, you know, you get it. Uh, and he sang uh, all the places where the age of consent is 18, 17, and 16. I believe 16 is the youngest in the United States. And so a lot of people were saying that these girls that he was interacting with, which if you if you go and find the tweets, some of them were 16, some of them were 17, and some of them were 18 and above. I didn't see any that were below 22. I think 22 is maybe the oldest that I saw. This kind of brings to light a conversation that perhaps we should be having as a society around how old is old enough to make a decision and what even is age of consent? So I did a little research on age of consent because I wanted to know when we established the age of consent. There is, it's a law, we had to establish it as the United States at some point in time. So I did, jumped uh, onto the internet, did a little searching and found out that the age of consent actually, I mean, didn't really get established until the late 1800s. And even then it was like seven to 12 which is, that is an insanely young age, seven to 12, that's crazy. <clears throat> and it wasn't until the late, the very late 1800s, almost the 1900s, I believe it's like 1886 into 1920 is when they finally established it, uh, when there was a re <clears throat> reform movement where they wanted to change the legal age of consent to 16 to 18. So that happened around 1888 and then until 1920. At 1920, most states in the U.S. had the age of consent at 16 to 17, somewhere in that range. To put that into perspective, I also looked at the average lifespan of someone in the 1920s because we look at this from a very now perspective where we can live to be 110 years old. So 18 seems a little young because we can live to be 95, 100, 110. And it's getting further and further out as medicine increases. So I checked the average lifespan and around 1888, the average lifespan was like maybe 46 years old for men and 50 for women. So if you're, the age of consent is 18 and you're only living to be 46, that's about a third of your life that you've already lived. So people just because they weren't living as long had to mature so much faster back then. So we can't look at age of consent as a, a good marker of are people able to make sound decisions at 18 in the current culture. We should be evaluating, are they old enough to be buying cigarettes at 18? Are they old enough to be drinking at 18? Are they old enough to be driving at 18? Are they old enough to be taking out tens of thousands of dollars in student loans or in loans in general? Are they, are they responsible and making a good decision? Are they able to be making decisions about having sex and understanding the risks that come with having sex? 
Only recently did I care about the risks associated with having sex. What I'm saying here is, yes, we can bring up the age of consent defense and say, hey, so a lot of these girls were over the age of consent. But I think there, there is a larger discussion here of culturally, why do we have an age of consent? And what actually are we saying by setting it at 18? I feel like when you defend the age of consent at 18, we're, getting, we're giving a lot of agency to these, to these young people. And I know that at 16 and 17, I really wasn't making the best decisions. I, you think you are because you're a teenager and you know everything. But in reality, if I'm being honest, I wasn't making the best decisions. I shouldn't have been signing the student loan that I did. I, I, I regret that to this day. I should not have been signing that student loan. So I think we really need to have a discussion and maybe some disclaimers around age of consent. On age of consent is 18, it's cool to have sex with other 18 year olds and people around your age, but perhaps perhaps there's a discussion around I don't want to say age limits because we, we really can't regulate everything. There's there's obviously cases to it all, but what is what is the allowance here? Like how do we how do we judge this? This is it's a really tricky conversation to be having. This actually leads right into power dynamics too. Uh, if you like my content, hit subscribe below and mash that bell so you, you get a notification every time I upload a new video, which is currently daily. Anyone who's in a position of power celebrity, somebody with a lot of money, somebody with influencer status, whatever it is, I guess you'd say the celebrity status, uh, wielding that power need to be held in higher scrutiny than a normal person because we've established a culture of worship for celebrities. So if a 16 year old girl is receiving a message, regardless of the age of the person, let's say a 25 year old, 30 year old, 40 year old, whatever it is, that girl is going to feel special just by the merit of having that person reach out. And so she's not going to be able to make a sound decision on what exactly she's doing because she's going to be a little starstruck and a little blinded by fame or power. That being said, I also think that some of these discussions also totally remove the responsibility of the parents and of society to educate young women on how to respond to this stuff and recognize it when it's happening. So in this Chris D'Elia case, he almost had a script that he followed with every single girl that he reached out to. He'd reach out to them on social media. He would tell them that he was in town, in their town for a show, doing a show. He would uh, say that the show was over and that he was bored. And then he would tell them that they were cute. And then he would ask to move the conversation off of Facebook or Instagram and into something else like text messaging, Snapchat, or email, where he would then potentially ask for nudes. Uh, and then when he found out that they were 17, I, there is some evidence that he would back off and he would not try to pursue it at that time. But there is, in my mind, proof that he was labeling these women by the city that they were in. And then when he would return to that city, he would be able to search his little database of snatch, find women in that area and re-message them and say, hey, I'm back in town. Do you want to meet up? And he would always say, hey, you want to meet up? Oh, wait, you don't want to make out? And he would always use the word make out. Make out was always in there. You want to make out? Uh, and a couple girls even recounted going to his hotel room and hanging out with him. Uh, there was one where there's two girls there and he was feeding them drinks. And I think one of the problems with him that I have with him feeding them drinks is that he claims he doesn't drink or do drugs. And so if he's not drinking or doing drugs, he knows that getting them drunk, he's aware that getting them drunk is inhibiting their ability to make a sound decision. So there was, again, a system there. He had a system where he would reach out to these young girls in cities. He would mark them down in the city that they were in. He would remember them reach out a year, years, sometimes years later, normally a year later when they were now 18. And he would say, Hey, I'm back in town. You want to meet up? So there was a predatory script. And I think that that is being removed from the conversation when everyone was focusing on the age of consent, when everyone is focusing on the power dynamics and all of this other stuff around it and, and the age of these women. And I think the more problematic one is this predatory script that he had, and then the database keeping of all these girls in different cities, which 
at the end of the day, a lot of guys are just trying to get laid. I've, I've said this before in my other videos, dudes just want to get laid. So if I read his script, it's just a dude who's trying to get laid. And one of, and this is my opinion on it, one of my opinions on it and why I think it's totally ridiculous that he was going after these teen girls is that he was a handsome, famous celebrity with money. He could make people laugh. There was probably plenty of women at his shows that were of sound mind there because they liked his comedy. They were attracted to him and they would actually want to get to know him or even hook up with him. But he was instead on social media preying on these young girls that were under 18 knowingly. You can see that some of them even posted like those balloon pictures with 16 on their Instagram when he was reaching out. So he knew that they were young uh, and tried to get these young girls to come back to his hotel room instead of just meeting some of the fans afterwards. Like even if they're, they're what they're called chuckle fans, even if they're chuckle fans and you're, you're, and he's hooking up with girls who are just into hooking up with comedians. I'm sure that some of them are in, in of legal age and attractive and paid to be there and want to get to know him anyway. So like the systemic approach of, I don't want to be, I want to get laid in every city that I go to, I think is the real problem here. Um, I mean, it's also a problem for pr preying on young women, for sure. Age of consent needs to be discussed. Power dynamics even need, need to be discussed. And I think that we need to have a conversation with young girls on how to recognize predatory behavior from men. Uh, if they start, you know, pushing very, very quickly to hook up or make out or do whatever, like that's an easy red flag to to uh, acknowledge and uh, move away from. And then once you start seeing that, don't respond. A lot of the girls too keep responding and that always confuses me. Like if you know what's going on, you can see what's going on, just stop responding. Um, but of course, again, the celebrity status is there. So they're interested in, in potentially saying, hey, I hooked up with a celebrity uh, or hey, I'm dating a celebrity. I think there's also an element of hope there for a lot of women. They hope that they can that they can be the one with the magic snatch to lock down this guy. And so then they'll have all of his money and they kind of get an easy card uh, in life. And so I think that there's a, a definitely also an element of that at play where these women don't stop responding because they're like, well, I mean, there is a chance that I could somehow convince him that I'm the one and then I get an easy card. Which is, I mean, that's not good. So I think society as a whole needs to have a, a bigger discussion about what is the age of consent and how do we implement it what are the power dynamics here uh, when celebrities are reaching out to non-celebrities? I mean, when I was a kid, you could only see those celebrities in magazines. Now you can literally text message them or DM them whenever you want. I've sent videos to celebrities before just because why the hell not on Instagram? You can. You can just send a video. You can just send a video. You can just respond to anything they say with a video. Like, it's crazy. Society didn't used to be like that. So, and we haven't had discussions around what it's like now to live in a society where as a 16 year old girl, if you're crushing on BTS, a member of BTS can literally reach out and DM you. Like the psychological impacts of that are crazy. And then also the conversation needs to be have about systemic predatory behavior and what that looks like and what it is. Uh, because it was very clear to me that he had a system down, that he was marking women and then going back in for the kill later on uh, when he was back in their city a year or two later. So I'm disappointed that this came out about Dalia. His apology wasn't real great either. He pretty much said, hey, I got caught up in my lifestyle. Uh, didn't deny that he that he did any wrongdoing or that he was in the wrong at all. And also said that, that he never pursued any underage women and that he never exchanged nudes with any of the girls who tweeted about him, which, I mean, that's pretty specific. No, none of the girls that tweeted about you. So that leaves a pretty open box for all the people that didn't tweet about you or all the people that don't have social media that have no idea that this is going on, that you still preyed on. So, I mean, not the best response, Chris. So Dalia, you lost a fan, unfortunately. I was I was one of your biggest fans and now you lost a fan because I just, I'm not cool with this behavior, man. And uh, I, I look forward to having like a society as a whole discussion about this. That's been today's Joe show. It's kind of a, just a free flow talk discussion for today. Uh, in the meantime, if you have anything you'd like to re me re to react to or read, you can send articles to hijoeshow at gmail.com. I also s accept love and hate there, whatever you want to send my way. That has been today's Joe show. 
Until next time, read something good.